There is something about good art. You get to touch the lives of thousands of people, and when you die, you leave behind a legacy that can never be forgotten. There were, and still are, several exceptional actresses in Hollywood with timeless legacies, but today's video is going to be focused on the life and legacy of Janet Leigh, cinema's original scream queen. Oh, you do not want to hear her scream. But before we proceed, subscribing to our channel would mean a lot to us, so go on and hit that subscribe button. If you are done with that, let's get right into it. Early Life Born Jeanette Helen Morrison, she was the only child of Frederick Robert Morrison and Helen Lita. She was born on July 6, 1927, in Merced, California. Her mother was of Danish ancestry, while her father was of Scottish, Irish, and German ancestry. She didn't grow up in Merced, though. Her family moved to Stockton, a town in California, shortly after her birth and that is where she grew up. Her family was a very poor one, and she even had to get a job to keep the family going. During the Great Depression, her income combined with her father's income made sure her family did not suffer. She was raised as a Presbyterian and was a member of the local church choir throughout her childhood. She and her family had to move back to Marsed when her grandfather became terminally ill in 1942. Upon relocation, they stayed in her grandparents' home to be able to take care of her grandfather better. She had her early education in Stockton, attending Weber Grammar School and later Stockton High School. She was a great student with some excellent academic records. She graduated from high school at just 16. In 1943, she enrolled at the College of the Pacific, now known as University of the Pacific, as a double major in music and psychology. She was also a member of the Alpha Theta Tau Sorority in college and was very active in the college a cappella choir. She continued to work to support herself and her family, taking jobs at retail shops and dime shops during Christmas and summer vacations, as well as manning the school's information desk when school was in session. She still managed to combine all these excellently and didn't record any failure throughout her time in school. Although her intelligence came in handy during her career, that is not what got her into the film industry in the first place. Career the story of how she was discovered is one of the strangest stories yet. Being somewhat of mixed heritage, her beauty was an exotic, exquisite kind that was sure to make anyone look twice. Coupled with her charming smile and voluptuous body, she was a total knockout. Anyone who knows how Hollywood works would know that this combo is a one-way ticket to stardom in Hollywood. In the winter of 1945-46, to Lee's parents were working at Sugar Bowl a ski resort in the Sierra Nevada, when actress Norma Shearer came in for a vacation at the same resort. During one of her outings, she noticed a photograph of Lee that the ski club photographer had taken during the Christmas holiday and placed in a photo album on the counter for guests. Intrigued by Lee's beauty, she openly declared that she was going to make Lee a star and asked if she could borrow the photograph. She returned to Los Angeles with it and showed the picture to the MGM talent agent at the time. And using her influence, she was able to get Lee a contract with MGM, despite having no acting experience. This was pretty easy, since her late husband, Irving Thalberg, had been a senior executive at MGM. When asked why she did it, she said, That smile made it the most fascinating face I had seen in years. I felt I had to show that face to somebody at the studio. Lee dropped out of college and became a student of a drama coach, Lillian Burns. She made her film debut in the Civil War film, The Romance of Rosie Ridge in 1947, where she played the romantic interest of the lead character, Vaughn Johnson. She earned the role when she performed Phyllis Thaxter's long speech in 30 Seconds Over Tokyo for the head of the studio talent department. While she was shooting the movie, her name was changed to Jeanette Reams to Janet Lee, then to her birth name, Jeanette Morrison because the studio felt Janet Lee might cause confusion with Vivian Lee, who was also an actress. She, however, reverted to Janet Lee and changed its pronunciation to Lee. She re-enrolled at the University of Southern California in 1947 to complete her collegiate studies. Her performance in the several other movies that followed earned her so much recognition that in 1948 she was named the number one glamour girl of Hollywood. She was also known for her meek, generous, and polite manners towards everybody, even though she was a celebrity. Roles in the MGM version of Little Women, The Red Danube, The Doctor and the Girl, and the Joseph von Sternberg adventure and drama film Jet Pilot earned her international acclaim and sealed her spot as one of the best actresses of her time. She also signed contracts with Universal Pictures and Columbia Pictures and was one of the highest paid actresses of her time. Her most iconic role was her role in the horror film Psycho, where her character was murdered in the shower. She admitted that this role traumatized her so much that she tried as much as possible to avoid showers for the rest of her life. She did, however, receive the Golden Globe Award for Best Actress for her troubles. Personal Life 
She was married four times with two children. Her first marriage was at the age of 16, in her final year of high school. Her husband was John Kenneth Carlsley, who was 18 at the time. The marriage got annulled after four months. While in college, she met Stanley Reams, a U.S. Navy sailor who was enrolled for the V-12 Navy College Training Program. They got married in October 1945, only to divorce four years later in September 1949. They also had no children together. In June 1951, she got married to Tony Curtis, a hugely successful actor who had starred in over a hundred movies. Although their wedding was a private one, their romance and marriage was highly talked about. They made several movies together that were hugely successful, with some glamorous performances from the duo. They had two children together, Kelly and Jamie Lee Curtis. When they were born, Lee turned down several roles because she did not want to be separated from her infant daughters. Her second daughter, Jamie, went on to become an actress and starred with Lee in two movies. Her marriage to Curtis ended in 1962 due to outside problems, which referred to the death of Curtis's father, although Curtis had a different reason. I was very dedicated and devoted to Janet, and on top of my trade, but in her eyes that goldenness started to wear off. I realized that whatever I was, I wasn't enough for Janet. That hurt me a lot and broke my heart. She got married to Robert Brandt in the same year. They stayed together until her death. She died on October 3, 2004, at the age of 77 from vasculitis. Her body was cremated and buried at Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery in the Westwood Village neighborhood of Los Angeles. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today, but if you want to see more videos like this, check out our previous videos and turn on post notifications so you get notified when we release new content. See you soon!